first of Rajab, the 15th of Sha'ban, Layla to Juma, the night of Juma, and the Eid of Fitr, and the Eid of Naha, the night of Eid. It was the nation to remember that if you're standing with the night, and the heart's down, you're not going to die. So in the second, yet we also have found that these new nights were to us were not a suggestion. Sufyan ibn Uyayna said, we have also found that these nights are not the nights where du'a is rejected. Sayyidin Ali radiallahu anhu in the authentic narration used to spend extra time generally with the ibadah. What can become an innovation if people lock certain things in, like on the 10th Sunday of Rajab, for example, on the 15th of Rajab, where it has to be like this. But to do extra nawazim, it's a wonderful thing, especially in this month. And, uh, you know, some of these people that are so, so-called scholars that, like, if, if you read, like, the, con- the, 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 the contrast, if you read the fatwa from the other side, where they say there's no credibility in Rajab, when you read it, you're basically going to be reading constant attack on Zikr of Allah, constant attack on the recitation of Qur'an, constant attack on Dua, and that's the fatwa. If you look at, really, what's going on? Like, what's, what's the point? Okay. What are, you, what are you trying to get to? You'll find that they are trying to pull people away. But this month is a month where it's time to give people what they seek. People that have not been fulfilling their own love, now is the time. Because if they're not doing it now, and they say, well, it's Ramadan, we already know how that works. Last Ramadan passed. Last Ramadan passed. And Sahabas cried at their entire year. They said for six months after Ramadan, they cried that their Ramadan was accepted. And the six month mark, which is See, that's the spring, and now he can come back to life again. Now they cry out of joy that Ramadan's on the corner. It's so interesting, you know, how they were, Rabbullah. But when Rajab came in, you know, yes, some of the awliyat, they don't roll up their sleeves in the Rajab because their sleeves have been rolled up from day one. You know, we've mentioned this about Hazrat that this is how it is. There's no such thing as for him as 15th of Sha'bat. I mean, there is, but I mean, there's no such thing as like, there's something unique about the night of Juma, the night, I mean, every night is made with the other for these people. Like every night, Jibreel Ali is with those types of people. They don't have to wait until the 27th night to be touched by the wind. But for a lot of people like us, these type of things revive the heart, they're a good thing. And, and, and it's from the Ashkar al Hurum for sure. That's absolutely authentic, that it's from the sacred months. What that means is it's one of the four uh, most it's, it's one of the four sacred months. It has two major meanings. It has many meanings. But one of them is that it's a more spiritual month. It's a, it's, a, it's a month of holiness. And another meaning is that there's no war or fighting that's to be taken place at this time. I remember uh, some of uh, Sheikh Ramadan Sayyid Bukhi, may Allah have mercy on him. One of the things he was crying in the mimbab during the month of Rajab, and he said, Stop fighting, it's Rajab. But people didn't care. Like, what do you mean, it's Rajab? There's no fighting allowed in the month. So if you can't, like, if an enemy is trying to fight you, unless you have, actually have no choice, like, it's like immediate self-defense, there, if an enemy is trying to fight you, you can't even do that. Scholars have said, what about arguing? Like, if, if the example is the extreme example, then it's understood that everything below that, logic says, everything below that would also fall into that category. So if you can't have war, and usually people fight war, they're supposed to fight war for a credible reason, mm-hmm. right? I mean, like, if you hear some of the, the kids around here about why they have game fights, it, they, they give you quite a decent justification based on what they're saying. But if they can't even do that with their resources, of course, in the month of Rajab, then what about arguing? This is why if people are, if anyone's listening, they have a habit of arguing, for example, with their spouse, they should not argue right now, especially this month. Because you, you, if you're going to hear the narration tonight, this is one of the most frightening hadith in the hadith collection. It's one of the most frightening hadith in all of the hadith collection. And, and, and uh, it's really something that makes, it really should scare us, these narrations. And we usually like to do this around the time so we can start getting ourselves ready. But the Miracle of Muhammad, Rahimullah Ta'ala, wrote an extensive detailed uh, you know, thesis on Rajab. And he gave a very balanced thesis, very wonderful thesis. So he doesn't go to either two extremes. So a lot of this was extracted from what he said. But it is from the sacred months, so there's no fighting, let alone argumentation. It's also narrated that Sayyidina Ali radiallahu ta'ala, Sayyidina Aisha radiallahu ta'ala, this is in the Rajab al 
Sayyidina Abdullah bin Umar, they used to love to do Umrah in the month of Rajab. Even though there is a debate with the Prophet of Umrah and Rajab or with the Ma'am Rajab, there is a khilaf between uh, Sayyidina uh, Abdullah bin Umar and Sayyidina Aisha. Bin Umar. The point is, they like to do Umrah during this time. Alright, so this is like basically doing up the extra gas thing for the long drive ahead. You know, Rajab is gas enough. If Rajab is good, Sha'ban is good. If Sha'ban is good, Ramadan is great. If Ramadan is great, Layth al Qadr is, you know, the premier. It, it is, you know, the Zirwat al Sinan. You see, it's built up. People that just, see, there's some people they, like in the case with Afra, I think. They wait for the last 10 days to get busy in Ramadan. Hmm. And some people, they get busy in the middle of Ramadan. It takes them 10 days. Some people, right after the first 10 days. Some people on the first night of Ramadan. Some people, it goes, they get busy on the 15th of Sha'ban. And it goes up. Some people, Sha'ban, they take serious. Some people, they start before Rajah. The Sahaba, as we said, started six months before. So I don't think anybody in here, unless that's your maqam, walillahi alham. For six, six months ago, you were journeying, I mean, you all didn't take a lot of Ramadan, but I mean, like on a daily basis, journeying to Ramadan. You know? And now, Muslims, sometimes when they hear that we fast for Ramadan, they're like, you go the whole day with no food and no water? That's crazy. Why would you do that? Some of them think, like, you don't eat the whole month. They're like, you don't eat for a whole month? Like, you know, I thought they were stupid people, but now, obviously. So they're shocked. Yes, Muslims cry on Ramadan day. So some non-Muslims are shocked. What kind of suffering? That's crazy. And you haven't seen it either? Like, yeah, why don't you become Muslim and give it a shot? You know? <laughs> but but Muslims cry when Ramadan leaves. Because it's, again, it's something experiential. Someone has to experience it to know what it is. So it's a very important month. Some say Rajab has different meanings. You know, like Kalim, the Shaykh Ibn Abi Rahimullah Kalim mentions, like Ra, Ma, Ban, he mentions that Ra is for Rahma, and then he has the name and the Dal. Some say Rajab is Rahma, Jud, which is generosity, and Hir, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showers these things upon people in this month, Ra, Jaba. Okay? Uh, also, we know that the Prophet said in an authentic hadith, and we should do so every single day. Allahumma mm-hmm. barik lana fi Rajab and Sha'ban and Allah wa Nara Ramadan and we should those who have a heart to merit it. Allah bless us in this month of Rajab and Sha'ban. So even if people say, well, no, Rajab is not a special month other than the four sacred months. Okay, so what did the Prophet mean when he said blessings in Rajab? He's asking blessings for what? For more food? Is that his concern? Is this what people think about him? No, he's talking for sure about spiritual connection to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah, oh Allah, bless us in Rajab. Bless us in Sha'ban and allow us to see Ramadan. Allow us to reach Ramadan. Do you ever say it every day until Ramadan? So Rajab is. Generally, not as a set like with, but it should be like pretty much a daily thing. You know, like, you know, it should be within your du'as as much as possible. You keep putting it in there, you keep putting it in to your du'as as much as possible. Some say it's also called Rajab al Asabah, which is one of the Sabha. Remember, remember we did the Maqamat of love in the Buddha one? So that's one of the maqamat of love. Sub is when you pour something and it overflows, like out the cup. So some say because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala overpours his love and generosity and knowledge into people into this month that respect this month and have adab. This is in the Rajab's quote, Alhamdulillah. He also said, Alhamdulillah ta'ala, that another name is Al Asham. And there's a difference of opinion of why it's Al Asham. There's nothing absolutely that you could say it's totally authentic. There is a weak narration, uh, but it holds some credibility. Ibn Rajab does narrate uh, that um, it's called Asam means the, the deaf one. And he says maybe it's just, this is possibly through Kesh, uh, something like this, like this, that, uh, that, that uh, on the day of judgment, uh, no, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls Rajab and holds it accountable and says, What was my servant doing on Rajab? So it stayed quiet, like the deaf person doesn't hear. So a lot asks the second time, what was my servant doing? He stays quiet. It doesn't want to say anything bad. Third time it asks, and then Rajab says, Oh Allah, you are the one who orders servants to cover each other's faults. Mm-hmm. And not to backbite or say anything bad. Mm-hmm. Ya Allah, that's why I'm not saying anything. 
And the Prophet ﷺ has called me the Da'wan, al asan It is one of the words that Prophet called Allah the Asan. And that's because the angels are restricted not to hear any sin and not to hear even the pen writing. They only hear the good that, the, the uh, writing. The pen stops writing in the month by the order of Allah. I am the one who does not hear the bad, but your servant says, I am the one who only hears the good. I hear their obedience and I do not hear their disobedience. And Allah gives permission. Again, this is probably through some type of uh, kashf that we're showing. One of the Sufis said, no, it's called Rajab al Asam because people are supposed to shut up this month. The silent month. It's not a month of talking too much. If you talk too much in Rajab, you already lost your Ramadan. Like Imam Ghazali said, whoever talks a lot will make a lot of slips. Whoever makes a lot of slips will make a lot of sins. Whoever makes a lot of sins will be held accountable in the Qiyamah. So this is a month where we should all try to talk less mm-hmm. as much as possible. We should try to talk less during the month of Rajab as a practice of Ramadan. As a practice. It's actually a negation to say that you're not allowed to talk, but for training purposes. If you say that it's Sunnah not to talk, that's wrong. This is why it's mentioned in the books of Sunnah that during real time you're supposed to like talk a little bit because some people talk, there's so much adab when you eat that you can't talk. That actually happened in Islam at a certain point where people said there's no talking at the dinner table because the protocol is so high. So people said, no, no, no. Now it's going too far. Islam always brings back to the middle way, right? The balance way. So this month there should be less talking. Probably here we will shorten our tali and maybe and, and, and try to finish early. So hopefully we can apply at least one or two of the advices that we're going to mention at the end. So tali will be a little bit shorter and we'll be increasing our time in the ibadah. Because now, you know, as we get closer to Ramadan, talking should get less and the ibadah should get more. Talking should get less and the ibadah should get more. So in Ramadan, it, by that time, there's, there's a training that takes place. You know, we should be able to, by Ramadan, have been able to sit in the same spot for two hours at a time without feeling agitated or having to move or having to make a phone call or send a message to somebody. This is part of the training. You know, because, uh, like I said before, and I know I've said this before, but this is a, a reminder for us. You know, for example, when you hear, like, Nasheed, somebody where it's singing the praise of the Prophet, who became really, uh, they became washed down to, like, Entertainment, but traditionally there is a whole chapter in the Qiyat called Sama'a. They do for spiritual state. People used to witness these things and they take them to another world, quote unquote. Like one of the students at the English school said once she did, Fatih was just able to take her to another world. That's what it was supposed to do. But now people like to hear it and they talk and stuff, so far, they hear it, so they stop. But the point is that these things were taken very seriously. When there's zikr, they think so. Someone has a, a spouse and they can text them while the spouse is talking and see how long their marriage lasts. You can get the counseling from Shaykh Omar in no time. And you think that's a joke? That's not a joke. That's not a joke. You can ask them. It's not a joke. It's very serious. So, now, obviously, the problem comes in when you have like serious things you have to take care of and work. You know, spouses should be forgiving each other. But that's a, if that's a lifestyle and a habit, that's a problem. Where, you know, there's no attention given. So then, what about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when people don't give attention to him? Can you imagine that, you know, like the hadith says about the person praying, they keep getting distracted, other thoughts, and then Allah says, Oh, right, yeah, Abdi. Is it really other than me right now, my servant? And so the man will come back. He won't know why he's like, I gotta concentrate. He'll get distracted again. Oh, right, yeah, Abdi. Is there anyone besides me? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will ask a few times until he leaves us. And then, and then they're left in that state where their prayer was, uh, like it says on the Day of Judgment, that some people's prayer, because there was no concentration, it would be in the form of a disgusting rag, and they would be flung back and smacked in their face. Because the prayer was empty. There was nothing in the Salah. It was just motion up and down, and there was nothing there. There was no connection. There was no uh, resal. There was no like usu. There was no connection. So again, Rajab is a time where we have to learn how to talk less. For those that have a problem talking, I'm going to recommend something a little bit unorthodox. I'd like you to go to your phone bill, okay, and look at the amount of minutes you spoke last month, and the amount of text messages you said, and set yourself a goal. I know that sounds weird, and probably you'd never find that in any book in the history of Islam, because they didn't have this problem for sure. And then if you did, for example, 44,800 and 
66 minutes, bring it down to like 25,000. Okay? If you have this many text messages, bring it down in half. If you text, make sure it's only something that's related with me or something that's going to benefit the Ummah. This is a month where they're talking less. The chat groups where, where we joke and things, nothing wrong with that, we all joke and everything, but it should be less. If you open your phone and you find 64 messages, and it's all joking about how they cooked chicken in this pot and it looked like this or it looked like that. Again, I'm also joking and having lightheartedness. We know some of that, Ramadan is pretty lighthearted with each other. But it's time to be a little bit more serious now. Now Ramadan's around the corner. So the joking gets reduced. We still joke. We don't want to become dry people that like, this is Russia. How dare you talk to me? Go to zikr. No, that, then, then you're becoming from the people, la khayru fi, la yakla wa la yakla. Now you're from the people that the Prophet said, there's no good if you can't get along with people, if you can't get along with me. Like if you're not lighthearted, if you can't joke. The Prophet didn't like that. And, the, and, and Jesus said, it's a narration from our Prophet said, the farthest heart and the hardest, the, the farthest person from Allah is only the hardest heart. So being gentle and laughing and lighthearted is okay, but again, it comes down to a balance. There has to be time for seriousness. You know? And there has to be time for that too. There has to be that. So he also says that, so, so it's one of the times where talking should be a less. Abu Bakr al Raq, Rahimullah Ta'ala, said, he's one of the great ulama, he has many qalamat too. He said, Rajab is the time to sow your seeds, and Sha'ban is when you irrigate them, and Ramadan is when you reap the benefits of your work. This is again for somebody that puts the work in from now. See, Ramadan is a time of forgiveness, right? But like Sheikh said, some people go into Ramadan, they're already forgiven for, for their work in the previous month. So what, do you, so what happens if your account is clean? You get what? Like, let's use finances as an example, because some people are always concerned about you know, the mighty dollar, quote unquote, for the other BS. So let's say that, you, like, gaining forgiveness is like getting out of debt. It's like you want to break even. So, so a lot of people, by the end of Ramadan, they got out of debt. Alhamdulillah, they've been forgiven. Everyone hugs, like, Alhamdulillah, congratulations, you've all been forgiven. That's great. And you should still seek forgiveness in Ramadan. But let's say you went in Ramadan and you already cleared your debt. So what, what, what's after debt? Prophet. You. The Prophet so said, no doubt. And that's why, if, see, here's, here's, here's a little, not a secret, but here's something that you, know, you should have figured out by now. Why did the Prophet say, Rajab is called Shahrullah, that he encouraged us to fall, and then he said, Shaban is my month, and he said, Ramadan is the month of the Muslim. Think about that person. Alright? So, if somebody follows the game plan, quote unquote, the game plan is that Rajab is the month where now we turn to our Lord. We have, don't wait to Ramadan to your khatm, your khatm of Quran, Rajab. So you get in the habit, I do one khatm, or if you're from Hafad, or you have to practice the Marajah, then you set certain juz a day. But if you're from the reading, then tonight, even if, yeah, you know, I mean, it's good to pick up where you left off, but maybe it's not a bad idea to start from the beginning. That's up to you. I don't want to give that advice. That's your decision. You want to start your khatm over, or you, someone who continues. Both are okay. But this month, is if, if it's spent close with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then you're introduced to the Prophet. Now you have Ashadu an la ilaha illallah, Ashadu an Muhammad Rasulullah, you're a Muslim. Ramadan is the month of Muslim, it's also the month of the Quran. What is the Quran other than two things? It's the word of Allah, and it's the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the word of Allah. Because the hadith is reversed also. In logic, the, when, when a statement is made, it applies to the opposite statement as well. So when Aisha said he's the walking Qur'an, that means the Qur'an is the word of the Prophet. Not his word that he said, it's Allah's word, but meaning it's describing the life of the Prophet, so just like the, the Prophet said, described how to apply the Qur'an. So it's all interconnected. Does that make sense? So this is called Shahr Allah, the month of Allah. It's a time to increase zikr. It's time to increase istikhar. Time for that. Then, Sha'ban, go back to the Prophet as well. Of course, both. A lot of messages together. But there's a little bit more attention there because of this narration. Then the Ramadan, Allah, so let the rains fall. Now it's full fledged. Quran, Allah, the Messenger, Dua, everything is there, right? La ilaha illallah, the roots all in Ramadan. Ramadan is like, you know, that's the, you could say, the final lap. Now you bring it all together. Upper body strength, lower body strength, because that's those that like exercise. So Imam Shafi rahimahullah ta'ala, he also said that, as I mentioned, that this is one of the nights that du'a is accepted. 
Some recommend, like for example, that there's no set number. It's, I mean, some, some scholars have set a number, but just to avoid innovations and everything, you set a schedule for yourself of what you can do. So some say we do 70 every day. You know, one of, one of our teachers recommends 500, just the thought of the morning, 500 at night. Uh, some of them recommend 1,000 every night. Some of them, generally as well, not just in this month. But this month there should be some increase of istighfar, meaning trying to start cleaning, you know, the car for the guest. Start cleaning up a little bit. This is a month of cleaning. Start cleaning up a little bit. You start cleaning this month, you know. Uh, there's other other important things that took in place in Raja Barawi goes out like events that took place. Uh, uh, there is several events that took place, but that's not necessarily based on any proof of any particular Ibada. We will mention them, inshallah, maybe uh, tomorrow. Uh, with that, inshallah, two more things. And then, inshallah, we will do our talk here. One, what are some of the things recommended to actually do this month in conclusion? Based on the narrations of the Salaf and righteous people and different things um, that are mentioned, you know, and uh, a, good, a good hint for us was in like this there was strong emphasis on constant Islam and holding ourselves accountable. That's the first and foremost thing, that there has to be, not the first, the second. The first thing is to set a good intention, of course. Intend good for you. So, if you have to keep on on paper, intend. Intend a schedule. Intend your goal by Ramadan. Intend your goal by Sikhs and Shaban. Have goals that you're set. Even if, now, now for Raja, okay, pay attention. For Raja, you want to set a goal that you know for a fact you're going to fulfill. For Shaban, you want to push yourself a little bit. And then for Ramadan, you want to set a goal that is very difficult to fulfill. So even if you fall short, you're still doing a lot. This is what we, we took from our teachers. For this month, you want to have so much, by the end of this month, you want to have this department that there is not one day you missed your rib. So now you're on a roll. Like, this is like, you know, like long distance runners. Not Ali. I don't know. They can do it, but maybe it takes three years or whatever. So long distance running, right? So you want to pace yourself in the beginning. So now you're setting, like, in the beginning part, you're pacing a certain number of minutes on every mile, right? But, so this is what Rajab is. Rajab is now giving you the pace of things. Boom, giving you the pace, okay? I didn't do Doha all year. Halas, I'm bringing Doha in. I'm bringing this in. I've been backfighting all year long. We're going to hear the hadith of the backfighters. You know, if this statement is not strong enough to stop us from that thing, I don't know what it is. All of your deeds are rejected. All, according to this hadith that we're going to marry. Meaning, your tahajjud is rejected. Your Qur'an is rejected. Your fasting is rejected. Your good deeds are rejected. Your feeding people are rejected. It's all rejected. The deed does not reach Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala based on this narration. And this is why when Sayyidina Mu'adh narrated it, he said he passed out. And he narrated it, he said, used to pass, and every time he narrated it, every time he narrated this hadith, he'd pass out. Because of how frightening it is. So if you've been backbending all your class, I'm not backbending in Rajab. And, you, and if you're serious, you tell your family. You tell your, you tell your wife, you tell your kids, if you hear me say anything about anyone's name behind their back, I'm asking you to stop me. I promise I won't talk back and justify it. And then don't talk back and justify it. But you know that that person was late. And, and, he, and she was supposed to be here at this time. No, he didn't introduce anyone in the whole class. And if you're not serious, then, you know, it's better that you don't come to these gatherings because they're going to be a proof against you. Just like Ibn Mas'ud said, if there's anyone who has cut and family time out, we ask you to leave the gathering because we, we're about to make dua and we don't want our dua to be rejected because of you. So if you cut off family ties, you are very answered and it affects people in the gathering. So there has to be some, like, some change from the norm. We get ready for Ramadan. Or let's just say Shabbat. Let's say we are right now the marking point, right? The first marker, Shabbat. So we, we want to set a marking point, which is the marking point of Shabbat. <coughs> or if that's too far away, some have even recommended the 15th of Rajab. Like that's not a set date because it's a holiday or something, but it's like that's a marking point. Where am I at in the 15th of Rajab? And then we assess. If you have a Sheikh, send him the whip. If you have no Sheikh, send Shaitan the whip. Man can, man, whoever doesn't have a sheikh, shaitan is a sheikh, whether people like that statement or not. And the Prophet talked about the bay'ah and the dying of Jahili without the bay'ah. Obviously, that's really, really was a political statement, but there's truth behind that. The Prophet's statements are holistic. They apply in every, they can apply in every circumstance. So he says here that, uh, that one is to set a proper intention. Like, what are we trying to seek here? What's our goal? 
Number two, increasing your stakhfar. Set yourself a goal. Okay? Set yourself a goal. And that would include that this is the time if you ever been practicing and I'm almost giving you new and you know, you know, try to implement that this month. One of the times, seek forgiveness for because the hadith says that from the people that are mustajab al da'wah are those that do this specific action. 25, 27 in generation every single day. Oh Allah, Allah must have given me a new set it in your let's people sit in their home like shopping. Let's see people like to pick up boy at 10 o'clock. <laughs> Put in there 25 times, seek forgiveness for the believers. Right? So that you can do that. Some people put lunch on their phone. Like to show them, oh my god, I haven't eaten all. Mm. You were thinking about food all day, you didn't need your phone to remind you. But people set the most ridiculous things for their phone to remind them. Why don't they set those things to remind them? You know? They are wrong. So that they can keep up on these things. Number three. Uh, you know, even though that, like I said, it's not a statement of the Prophet, it was actually one of the Naqshbandi Shaykhs that said that part of the silence monk is to not speak. Uh, I think that that's very important for our jamaat. Because like I said, alhamdulillah, we're very light out of jamaat, we're in jail, we're talking to each other, it's good, but it's not appropriate, especially for people sitting here, that after salah, they're the ones that gather in the back and talk, while the people that are quote unquote guests of the masjid are going to be quiet and talk. So that needs to stop, especially in this month. You know, the Prophet said the people that are deprived of this are the ones that right after Fajr prayer, they run out. They don't sit for a moment. So they're deprived of risk. The risk doesn't give them a benefit. So if you have to leave, for example, Fajr, at least sit for one minute. You know, at least sit for like two minutes and then, and then go. Even if it's just a minute, but don't sit on sit on and get up unless there's a reason. Like, you know, there's a, if there's a valid reason in certain circumstances, of course. That, but that's a habit, it's a bad habit. You understand the difference between a habit and a particular reason. If someone's ill, someone needs to wake someone up for Fajr, for example, then that's a priority. You can't be like, you know, I don't want to lose my risk, and your spouse is giving us prayer. So, you know, you go home and you, 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 pour, and you rub it a sub, you pour the water on them to wake them up. You say, Rajab al Asab. And then she's going to smack you and say, Rajab al Asab. <laughs> Stay quiet. <laughs> so those are like, that's a scholastic spouse, uh, marriage. The third is, Silent, is the silent month the fourth? Set yourself a goal for Quran, of course, because it's getting into Ramadan. What's recommended if there's two recommendations? Either do one khatam minimum. If you are even doing khatam every month, build it up. You know, increase it. Uh, you know, to, to whatever you're able to. If you're someone that's half of the Quran and you're almost half of you know, then so you can set outside of Quran. any month, you can set three years a day is what you recommend. So maybe three to five years. You know, if you're someone that has a strong pull, you can do more. You know, there's a lot of people that are doing 10 years every day. There are people that do that. You know, they're very serious about this stuff. So, you know. And the next is Nafsil Law. Some say that this is the month also to be Mirakha. Spend time thinking about your actions. Because it's a month of forgiveness. So it's not the first Tafuwa, 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 but then you're on the phone again back there. Tafuwa, 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 and then you're still eating haram. It's a month of actually reflecting on what am I doing wrong in my life? I'm not going to blame someone else. No one owes me anything. This is like, you know, it's very interesting. Our mission is, is rooted in the hood, and there's a lot of Arabs that come here too. And, and, and I'm not saying this in any negative way. There's no like racism in this area. I'm just saying they are. Because African Americans are racist, whether they want to blame it or not, they really did. I mean, people have no idea how much they said. If you don't know, I recommend there's a, uh, a documentary called As We Found. See how they suffer. And then you tell me, like, what would that do to generations? And of course, the Muslim world suffers. But this idea that someone owes us something to help us get out of our problems is never going to work. It's never going to work. Because if they really owe you something, since when did they get you? So they're not going to do it. So, sister, then just do it yourself. You know, and this is what we tell our children, like, no, you're supposed to be like, no, you're responsible for your actions. You have to take this care with it. You can still do it. But how do we cause people to be crippled? By saying, you know what, you're right. They should be given your right. And now the person is crippled. So we didn't give them lots of Netflix. Saying that people owe me rights. And he's seeing their lots of Netflix. This is how Shaitan will, will trick the people. So no, we, should, we can build our relationship with Allah. The last two is to make sure we have no ill feelings. Because there's strong hadith that come throughout this month. Especially in Shaitan. If you have bad feelings towards another person. Towards a Muslim. Okay? Towards a Muslim. I don't, you know, we have people working on Rahmah. 
the domestic violence. Okay, they should teach those women that were beat up by men that if they have a bad feeling towards them or hate them, they can maybe not be treated. And to the extent how haram and bad abuse is, they still have to learn how to get that out of their heart. And humans are able to do that. I can't. I'm, a, I'm only a human being. Exactly. So what, what, happened, what, what did you go through that's worse than what the Prophet went through? If we start the list of what he went through, there's no comparison. Uh, what he was a man. Okay, so then let's tell you about the women of Adam's day and the people of his family, what they went through. Well, there are Sahabas. Okay, but that's the standard. We can't keep justifying things and dumbing ourselves down. Like, you know, it's like these people that never want to learn how to swim. They only jump in the wading pool. It's called the wading pool. They're like little kids going to the foot. And they're like scared to go in the water. Like, they only want to learn how to swim. They don't want to swim. And they're always just standing at the, at the, by the three feet. They don't want to have to learn how to swim. So, you don't learn how to swim. But what they're saying is that you learn how to swim. We can overcome these things. We have a lot of people in our Jamaat that have been divorced. I'm sorry, I'm being very open. There's people in our Jamaat that have been divorced. You have to stop like, you know, thinking bad or just talking bad about our ex spouse Because you're losing all the rewards that you see. Even if you justify it. Look, I'm not saying it's not justified. Backbending is when you justify it, people. Backbending is when you're speaking the truth. Understand well. When you're speaking the truth about someone. That's called backbending. Maybe people don't know the definition. Backbiting is when you're speaking the truth about someone. Okay? Now, if Shaitan just whispered to you that, well, what if I was uh, oppressed? There's no backbiting and oppression. That's in the sense, that's in the position of a Qadi. Or in the position of someone who's judging between the two. But I don't think, you know, the person that you're walking with in the mall, or the brother that you're exercising with, that you're talking about this, that, and the other about somebody, is a party. You're going to judge, you're going to bring your the, the other person in the gathering and solve the problem. So it's that way. Don't do it this month, because you're going to ruin your whole month. And the last thing, inshallah, I'm going to read the hadith, is that what's recommended is to do two rakats of Toba every night. Sheikh emphasized a lot on Toba, so I thought just, you know, uh, somebody every night. And I would recommend. And inshallah, there's no reactiveness because do two rakats of Toba. People can't be like, oh my God, he's so pious. Like, no, he's actually like, he's proving to us that he's doing sin, or she's proving to us that he's doing sin. He doesn't come to tell you, I would recommend that after the you stand up and do two rakats. Because when you go home, who knows if you'll do a reward. But at least in the Raja, you do two extra rakats. And I'll encourage other people to do it. But the main intention is that I don't want to make it. Other people say, no, not really. That's not the point. Like, like one of the righteous people used to cry a lot, and he used to say, SubhanAllah, you were like, it's so, I mean, okay. <coughs> so he's actually one of the best. He mentioned like, he's kind of hinted that he was so pious, but it's not that. It's that I've done so much wrong that I have a lot more to cry about than you. You know, it's a different perspective. So, even though having a soft heart is important, and having a hard heart is very bad thing. So, two rakat. Uh, it's just called Toba. Very simple. You do two workouts and then after you ask a lot of forgiveness for all your sins. And if you think of some of your sins, you can. And if you're doing a sin and you cannot come out of it, like let's use music as an example. If it's some few people ask me about that music and so on, they are listening online and hopefully this will be helpful. I'm not saying give up music. Well, I am. But I'm saying that if you can't give up music, then ask a lot every night to forgive me and help you to come out that sin. If you ask sincerely every night from the bottom of your heart, Love to come out on his way. He will make work sooner or later. Sooner or later. And if and, and like Sheikh said, if it never happens and you die on that, you will you will be from those that were forgiven for that sin. Because you sincerely were asking. Okay? So those are some things that can be done, inshallah. Good intention, a lot of us to fraud, extra time with Quran. Uh, when I recommend if you have a shape that you send away with the shape, get it, get it, get it going, but don't like Keep pretending that it's not that important or that it's too, I'm too arrogant to send something like that. Uh, taking yourself to account, blaming yourself, talking less, no ill feelings towards another. You know what? The hadith doesn't even say Muslim, actually. I just remember it says uh, towards people, one of the narrations. The ones that are forgiven have ill feelings towards people. You know? That's why our methodology is we hate the sin, not the person. That's the methodology. It's the fraud and, uh, and there are two accounts, inshallah. I'll go ahead and read this hadith and then we'll close with the Dua and the Dua, inshallah.
We will just read it without any commentary, inshallah. This is the famous hadith that's narrated uh, among the value being put forth in more than one of these books. Uh, but here it's narrated uh, in the chapter of arrogance, in particular in the sins of the heart. It's the famous narration of Sayyidina Mu'ad ibn Jabal, رضي الله تعالى عنه. The narration of the Garden may be ostentation, arrogance, or meanness. Sufficient for you is one hadith that will deal with all these traits in this narration. On the authority of Abdullah ibn Mubarak, who is the Shaykh of Imam Bukhari, you know, he is also the student of Abu Hanifa, he narrated with his chain of transmission on the authority of a man who went to say, Ya Mu'ad ibn Jabal, Ya Mu'ad, O Mu'ad. Tell me a hadith that you heard directly from the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The man then said, Mu'ad wept so profusely until I thought he would have stayed quiet. Eventually he calmed down. And then he said, I heard the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say, O oh, Mu'ad, I shall narrate to you such a narration that if you uphold it, it will benefit you. But if you neglect it, it will leave you with no excuse before Allah and the Qiyamah. O oh, Mu'ad, verily Allah created seven angels before creating the heavens and the earth. Then he created the heavens, the Samawat. And then he ordained the angels of the gatekeeper of each of the seven heavens to guard those heavens. The recording angels ascend to the heavens with a servant deed that have just been recorded for the entire day. From the time he woke up until the time he slept. And all these were good deeds, and they possessed a nur like that of the nur of the sun. When the angels reached the lowest heaven, they anointed and they beautified these deeds. Then the angel of the gatekeeper said, Take these deeds and strike them on the face of the person who did that. For I am one that oversees backlight, and my Lord ordered me not to allow any deed of anyone who is guilty of backbiting. And he shall not allow these deeds to pass through that gate. He then continued, Then the angels ascend with another servant key. This one was anointed and magnified even more than the first, making it through the first heaven and to the second heaven. The gate for the second heaven says, Stop! Strike with the work of these deeds the face of the one who did it. For I am the angel that guards over conceitedness, some of this conceit in themselves. Verily, they sought their work in a transient aspect of the goodness. My Lord, but obey me not to let any deed get past me with this sin. For verily, they used to have pride towards those of the company they sat in. He then continued, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said to Mu'ad, Allah, and the angels, uh, then take a third person's deed. These ones have more nur, and they're glowing with the light of charity, with the light of fasting that day, and the, the light of much prayer. And these deeds truly triumph and impress the angels. They succeed through passing the first heaven, and then they succeed through passing the second heaven, carrying the deeds to the third heaven. The gatekeeper will say, stop, strike with the work, the face of the one who did it, for I am the angel that guards arrogance. Yeah. My Lord has commanded me not allow any of his deeds to get past me due to his arrogance. He used to be arrogant towards others while with them. He then continued, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, recording angels take the deeds of another servant, glowing like a shining star. Resounding with the glorification of Allah, and these deeds are so good, they're actually doing zikr, the deeds. Prayer, fasting, and even in his account showed up Hajj and Umrah. So, this is the man who completed Hajj that day. The angels carried him up until they reached the fourth level. The gatekeeper said, Don't stop. Strike with the deeds to the face. Strike these deeds to the face, to the back, and to the stomach of the one who did that. For I watch over and Ujo. He's impressed with oneself. My Lord ordered me not to allow these deeds to get past me. Whenever he used to do a deed, he did it with Virgil. He then, some of the lies, said, the recording angel is sent with the deeds of another man, escorting them to like uh, the beauty, the way a bride is prepared for her groom, until they reach the fifth heaven and penetrate through the first fourth. The gatekeeper tells them, Stop. Strike with these deeds the face and the back of the one who did them and place them on their shoulders as, a, as weight, like on the shoulder. I monitor envy, jealousy, hasad. Indeed, this person used to have hasid towards people who would study and do similar deeds to them as well. And every person would sell in acts of worship, they used to bother them. They used to have jealousy towards people that did good. But this is not jealousy of cars and stuff. This is jealousy of religious people between religious people. 
And not only they would have envy, but they would have ill feelings towards them. And my Lord commanded me to not allow this person to get past me to the higher level. The Prophet ﷺ then said, you're according angels to the deeds of another person. This one had prayer, fasting, charity, hajj, and umrah, and more. And they make it through the sixth level, where the gatekeeper says, stop, strike with the deeds, the face of the one who did them. He would never show mercy to a single one of Allah's servants who are afflicted by any misfortune or calamity. Rather, he would gloat over their hardships, meaning if someone that did, did harm to them, someone they didn't like, got injured or hurt, and they felt okay about that, it didn't bother them, then their deeds are rejected. Because they had no mercy in their heart. He would not show mercy to anyone of Allah's servants who are afflicted with misfortune or calamity. Rather, they would gloat over their hardships. I'm the angel of Rahmah, and Allah has ordered me not to allow their deeds to get past me. He then told Allah to continue that the recording angels take the deeds of another servant, consisting of prayer, fasting, spending wealth, and jihad, and scrupulousness, warah, piety. The deeds will hum a dhikr like the way a bee hums, and they'll shine like the brightness of the sun, escorting that through the heavens. Escorting with the deeds are so beautiful that 3,000 angels are carrying these deeds. When they reach the gates of the seventh heaven, the highest heaven, the gatekeeper says, Stop! Strike with these deeds the face of the one who did them. Strike his lips. Lock his heart. Bless all son of Asiya, Ya Allah. Verily, I will keep away from my Lord all those deeds that were not done with ikhlas. 